friends. Shall we have another look in a suitcase? This one. Let's see what's inside this one, shall we? Okay then, so what's in here? Well, it's full of bits of cardboard. Uh, let's get some of them out. And this is a massive clue. This suitcase is full of all the bits and pieces that I, I don't do this anymore, but I used to make horses. Um, now, on the top here, there's just, so if this is years ago when I had a physical shop and we're going to put some pictures in here later, maybe of um, of what the of what these looked like when they were in my shop. But if ever I came across a nice piece of cardboard, I would put it in the suitcase here, maybe stick. That's got a map on it. This has got a little bit of um, fabric. Um, this one's got some paper stuck on it. And I got into the way of knowing exactly how much cardboard I needed to make one of what I'm going to show you. And then I would just stick them in here. Uh, that one's got um, a bits of comic, Beano comic stuck on it. Uh, and then I would put the cardboard in here. Loads of Beanos. Loads of, this is just cardboard with bits of fabric stuck on, paper all sorts and then this would be all the little bits and pieces that I would use to make what it is I'm going to show you. There's loads isn't there? So here there's uh, a big copy box, copy paper box uh, with a bit of map. I might make those. They, yeah I might, I might make those while we're talking about it. Yes that's what I'll do because in here in the envelopes here I see. Oh look I've got some of this stuff. I've got some um, lovely sparkly wire that will come in handy for something else I want to do. And then here then are all the envelopes with the templates in. Yeah, we'll make one out of one of these maps. OK, then. So if I can remember how to do it before I show you all of the ones in here. Some more templates there. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about this particular um, thing here. Are. I'll show you. This one here, whoops, this one is called Patrick. I don't know why he's called Patrick. And on the back is the name of the horse and when I made it. So I made this on March the 16th, 2010. So these are 10 years ago I was making these horses. Now these are not my design at all. This is a woman I used to follow her blog. I, I think she has an Instagram. I'll leave all her details. The cat's just going to, that's it, just got the lead there on the camera. Her name is Anne Wood and she's an amazing artist who lives in, uh, in or near New York. You, some of you may know of her already. She makes absolutely beautiful things, beautiful. And uh, she did an exhibition uh, of a hundred of these horses. So I'll find a picture of that. So, and very generously, she has the template there on her website. And also for, uh, I've bought some of her templates in the past for the little boat and the little dolls and so on. But this one was a freely given template. You can see Patrick there better. So I decided, I loved her hundred horses exhibition. So, and I had a physical shop at the time. So I decided that I would make a horse every day. I would turn up at this little shop of mine. It was a disaster, the shop, by the way, an absolute disaster. I mean, it was loads of fun and people enjoyed going there, but I made zero money. In fact, I lost money for the two years I had that shop. I lost money. So, but the horses then, they're all packed away in this suitcase here. Put Patrick there. So what I would do, I would turn up in the morning. I don't think these are in any sort of order. No, 16th of May, no, number 78. And I would make a horse. Before I got the day started, I would make a horse. And then I would hang it on the wall. And it got to be so that people knew that there would be a new horse that day. This one's called Sylvie. Now I know why this is called Sylvie, 23rd of May, 2010, number 80. 
because I have a friend whose little girl is called Sylvie and she must have come in that day and I named the horse after her. <laughs> but they've been sitting in this, that's Bob, uh, February uh, 17th, that was number six, Bob. This one is called Wolfgang, as in Amadeus Mozart. Anyway, I'll show you quite, I'll do a little, oh, this one, this one here. This one's called Horse With No Name, after the Neil Young song, March 23rd, number 35. <laughs> so I'd make a horse every day. And to start with, um, that's Tom, is that Tom? Tam. I would name them and then people would come in and say, what's today's horse called? And I had a blackboard on the wall uh, with, um, you know, the shop offers and things for sale and what was going on in the shop that day. And at the top it said, today's horse is called Pandora. And then it got to be so that people like the horses a lot. This one's called Theosaurus, I think. It's called Dictionary Horse, renamed by Matt Theosaur, Theosaur Horse. <laughs> it got to be so that the horses were very, um, were very much a, the style of what was going on in the shop. And they were put up on the wall in a certain order, one, two, three, all the way round to 100, because I stopped at 100. Is that one Stella? No, that one's Betty. And um, it got to be so I knew all the names of them. So people would come into the shop and they would point to a horse and they would say, um, what's that one called? And, I'd, and without looking, I'd say Maisie. And they would lift it off the wall and they'd go, Maisie. And it was my party trick. <laughs> it was my party trick. That one's called Rose, I think. Absolutely. Rose. So all the horses were galloping in the same direction so that they would go around the wall. Who's this one then? I don't remember. Oh, that one's called Steve. Now there's another one somewhere called Jean because there, that's Jean, Steve and Jean. These are two friends of mine who must have popped into the shop when I was making or thinking about naming horses and I named them after them. This is my old GP, Steve, and that's his wife, Jean. <laughs> okay then so um well that's a pretty one what's that one called oh michelle <laughs> march the 12th number 27 so you can see can't you that i had a load of fun making these this is nigel oh this one's called fancy pants yeah this one's fancy pants <laughs> But do you know something? They've been sitting in this suitcase, I like that one, Sylvie, for 10 years. Well, I made them, so no, eight years because I left that shop. So 2010, so it was a couple of years later, I left that shop and I packed them all into this suitcase and they've never seen the light of day since then. That one's Les Anne, and it was named by Ruth and Fiona. I don't even know who they are, but sometimes people would come in and they, would, they wouldn't be people I knew and they would get to name a horse. This one is, um, that's a nice one. That one's called Eddie. That one's called Eddie. I think I know where that one needs to go. So what I've decided to do is I've decided to put these in the shop. I've decided to just put these in the shop and let people have them. Uh, and also there's a link to Ann Wood's website so you can make your own. Um, oh, what, who's this one? That one's nice. Peaches. <laughs> so I don't know quite how to put the, offer these in the shop because it might be nice if you just said a number, one to a hundred, and then you just got, because that's number two. And that one's called Floyd. And that was named by David, who's a friend of mine. And and at that time, I was decorating the backs of them as well. I very quickly stopped doing that. I just uh, I just, just um, would decorate one side so the back would be plain. And that's um, Hayden. Oh, Hayden should go with Steve and Jean because Hayden's their son, which must mean that there's one in here called Daisy. <laughs> What's their daughter? Who's that now? That one's called Lucy. 
So you can see that you can see what's going on here, can't you? Oh, I like this one. This one, this two-tone one. This one's called sherbet, lemon and lime. Oh, and sherbet has actually got a decorated back. So number twenty-one. I was still decorating the back. Number twenty-one. Uh, and then there's a Beano one. Oh, this one's fun. Look. This one's a, a map with uh, Texas in the middle. And this one is named Terry for some reason. Terry. Oh. He's named Terry because look what he's got written on his tail. Can you see that? Terry. There must be a place in Texas called Terry. Probably. This one's uh, Eliza. So you can see, can't you? We've got a lot of horses. Oh, I like this one. Fleur. Yeah, that one's called Fleur. I am remembering some of these horses, which is really great because it's been years since they've been seeing the light of day. That one's called Tea Cake because this is the um, wrapping paper there is on uh, a, a biscuit in the UK called Tea Cakes. And that's what colour the wrapping paper is. This is number one and its name is Primo. And then the last one, number 100, is called Ultimo, and it's in here somewhere too. That's a nice one. So sometimes I would paint them with watercolours like that. Dylan. And sometimes I would stick fabric or maps or uh, whatever, and then always there would be something fun for the mane and tail. This one's a Novelty Yarn. Uh... This one's uh, sort of Rick Rack. That's Sophie. That's Rick Rack. Uh, lovely yellow Rick Rack. Uh, Rick Rack worked well. So this one's called Loretta. Oh, this one was called something else and then got renamed. That happened occasionally. So that's Loretta with beautiful uh, pink mane uh, there. Uh, who's that now? Petal. So I'm going to try and find one that's got um, like Wolfgang. Oh, I've shown you Wolfgang. He's got um, cloth for his mane and tail. Um, and that one's a, f a very fancy one called Marianne. Uh, and she's named after Marianne Dashwood in Sense and Sensibility because she's very fancy. And she's got netting, hair and tail and a bow in her tail. Uh, let's see if I can find... Oh, look, that one, um, Magnus has got like a zigzaggy. I cut that one out of cardboard and stuck that one on. There's lots of different ways of doing this. Yeah, so I think it's time for these guys to move on. And I think the best thing to do is to number them one to a hundred, unless you, I don't know, maybe you've got a suggestion about how I could put these in the shop, because you might really, really want one. This one's made out of, that's called Carl, and it's made out of little scraps of envelope. Ch -ch -ch. These are the two ways I could do it. I could e either, that one is Harriet and Florence. I don't think I can photograph, can I photograph a hundred horses and put them all up there? I'm going to think this one through guys. George. <laughs> I could go to all the bother of listing every single one by, by its picture and its name. That one's called Beano because it's made out of a copy of the old Beano. Oh, and then the other thing is I would use lovely little buttons. Let's find one where you can see it more clearly. Who's this now? Pamela. And so this one, it's got lovely buttons here uh, to hold the legs on. And then this wire. The legs don't move. They would be stuck on. Lucas. He's made out of my... Um, Lucas is made out of the... Um, the box that my coffee press came in and this one I made on May the 4th so it's this is called Lucas after George Lucas may the 4th be with you there it is yeah I might have to just oh that's nice I like that one Linus number 17 May 29th so you could want you might want your birthday you might want a particular color you might want a lucky dip you might want your special number, like this one, Maria, is number 11. And this was named my Owen, my son, who was much younger then because this was a long time ago. Um, but what we'll do now, well, that's nice, birdie. 
sorry, Bridey. That one's called Bridey. And then Patrick is my favourite horse. I would be keeping Patrick, so he won't be on there. And this is Blanche, I think. Yeah, that's Blanche, who's just painted all white. So you can see what a lot of fun I haven't. I haven't looked at. Oh, that one. Oh, let me see. I remember Stella. No, Zoe. That one's called Zoe. That was a watercolour one that I just I just painted that morning. So I would arrive at the place. I would paint or stick. Uh, I would stick and then wait till that's dry and then just cut the bits out. There's Eileen. Oh, there's Eileen. Long before there was ever an egg hatched into a goose. <laughs> there's Eileen. <laughs> Oh, and there's another layer underneath here. I think this is Romeo. Yeah, that's Romeo because that one is not the 14th of February, but the 12th of March, but he's all red. And I remember who named that one, someone called Chris. She came in and uh, she named that one. I used to like letting people name them. And that one, who's that now? Oh, that's number 100, that's Ultimo. That was the last one. So I've got Primo and Ultimo for the beginning and the end. That's number 100, that's the last one. So I wonder how much effort it would be to, to list these by horse. Marion, 22. This one's called Margate. Yeah, it's number five. That's called Margate for some reason. So I, I could keep going on for a hundred of these because there are a hundred. Well, that, that one's nice. They're all incredibly different. That's Dawn. And ah, now uh, I had an official shop opening day, which wasn't the day that I opened the shop. It was some weeks later. Uh, in fact, I'll tell you what, I'll put some pictures of that because uh, I had a shop opening day on May the 29th, it says, and that was the horse for that day. To be truthful, I probably made that the day before because I was going to be busy on that day and it was a Saturday. And I, um, my mum and dad came up for it. And I put a ribbon across the door and they cut the ribbon and opened the shop officially. But also there were my two little friends who were little tiny tots then. So I put another ribbon a bit lower down and gave them a pair of scissors and they opened it as well. So, I mean, the shop, I tell you, it was a disaster. Um, and, and financially it was a disaster. But, you know, it was, it was, there were some good things about it too. Um, it had a, an, that's called Harry. It had an upstairs to it and uh, it was only small, the shop, but there was an upstairs where I used to run workshops and have um, friends of mine come and teach workshops as well. But the, the, I mean, the, one of the contributory factors was it was in a really weird place. Oh, this one. You see, this one's got all sorts of flame on it. Well, if you know about my, my friend Ted, who makes the candles, this was one of his leaflets. So this horse is called Ted. Um, so there was a, sh uh, a room upstairs which was full of everything like like my workshop set out now, but even more so, like five times more. And people would come. This big table was there and we would uh, do workshops. And we also had a week every Thursday. We had a, a day where we all got together and um, craft. It was a craft day, you know, uh, meet and make day where, you, you know, you brought your pat lunch and you... Uh, sat upstairs with whatever project you were working on and um, and did your stitching, your sewing, put the world to rights, all of that. So what I'm going to do now then is I'm going to, uh, oh, that one. I keep finding more that I want to show you. Now this one here is um, a page out of a, uh, a magazine which has got a beautiful um, sky and, and landscape. And this one's called <laughs> Dale Strider. <laughs> Great, Dale Strider. That's Daphne, pretty little one there. Uh, oh, now I think this one's Brutus. Yeah, this one's called Brutus. And I like his mane a lot. That was a piece of bias binding I used for his mane, Brutus. And his, um, yeah, he's got, he's got really nice paper, really nice figurative paper he's got. Right, so I've got to decide what I'm doing, but I am... Before I decide what I'm doing with them, because I want to pass these on, this is me downsizing and emptying this suitcase. So if if on Squarespace it allows me to list a hundred different options, then um, maybe that's how I'll do that. And you can choose 
um, either the number you want, the name you want, uh, the date you want. Um, put all those down here. And this one here, this one's called um, Bertha because she was... The, um, so in my workshop upstairs, I would do in the school holidays, I would do children's workshops. And one of the workshops I did was the horse course. And I would teach kids how to make the horse course and we would make them bigger if the kids wanted them bigger or we would make them that size or whatever. And we would do the horse course. <laughs> so I'm going to do that now. I'm going to go overhead with you and I'm going to show you exactly how I would make. And I'm going to use one of these maps, exactly how I would make one of these horses. And then I'm going to think about how to offer these in the shop and they'll be in the shop update that's coming up. Um, well, very, very soon. Let's go overhead then and make a horse. But do go over to Anne Wood. I'll leave her details down below. Download your own horse template uh, from her uh, uh, very generously offered. It's years ago, but I think it's still there. And make your own horse. And if you do, go over to Instagram and tag it with uh, LHH LGS. I'll leave that in the description below as well, because that's Last Homely House Lime Green Sofa. And that would be uh, great to see if other people make horses, what it is you end up making. You could make a hundred horses too. But for now, we're going to make one. OK, so we'll go overhead and we'll do that. OK, so <clears throat> here's the component parts you need. Um, I've just had a look at Anne Wood's website and these are still available as a free pattern. So you can download these yourself. There's the horse's body, a couple of front legs. and a couple of back legs and you can fashion a tail and a mane out of anything you like. So I'm going to make, um, I've already got this stuck on from 10 years ago. So I'm going to choose which map, I think I'm going to choose this map. So not using your best dressmaking scissors, I'm just going to cut this in half so that I've got, um, so all my horses are all going in one direction. Now, if you want your horse to go the other way, obviously, you can make it any way you like. In fact, yeah. So once you've cut out all your pieces, I'll take away the template pieces now, don't need those anymore. Now we're going to assemble this and what you need is buttons. So I've got my mum's button tin. Isn't that lovely? I remember as a little girl um, playing, I'd take the lid off this and I'd play with, uh, with these buttons for hours at a time. So I'll take out the... I made that when I was at school. <laughs> I'll take out the big things. And um, what we're going to do then is find some buttons. We need four buttons. Two of them need only be, you know, really quite boring buttons because they're going to go in the back just to hold things in place. So I'll choose those two buttons for that. But now we're going to look for some buttons that fit well on here. Um, so I could be some time. That'll do. That's fine. Good. So I'll line these up then where I want them to be. So there's the, that's the back leg and the front leg maybe. And that's, uh, Oh, Finland. I'll have Finland on the front. There we go, like that. And we'll just work out where I want all these to be. So that's okay there, I think, like that. And this one, like that. So I'm going to thread the wire through the button. And 
through the hole. And this is where you need the other button. I mean, this is just the way I've devised. You can do it any way you like. And then back through the button again. In fact, through the nicer button, like so. Back through the button, and you're just going to thread that back through the hole again. A little bit fiddly, this bit. And the same again on the back end. All the way through there. Actually, I'm wondering if I can use this. I think I probably can. I've cut that quite wide. Go through there. Just sort this guy's legs out. There we go. And there's a bit of wire there to hook him onto a nail. Got lovely, got the British Isles right in there, look. So that's good. And that's that's good enough. That's twisted on well enough. You can move the legs into a position that you like better, sort of running along. And now I'm going to sort out a tail and a mane. So here it is finished, my little map horse. He's got the British Isles here going up up his chest here. I made a little tail. I've just stuck that on with glue in between his legs there, the back legs. And then I made this mane that I've stuck on the back here, which is just a, like a bit of a loopy kind of mane out of a bit more of the map. And there is another horse which can join my <laughs> 100 horses. And if you look, his eye is the Faroe Islands, <laughs> which is just right up there in the sea. That was accidental. So that's how easy they are to make and lots of fun to make. And you could make them out of absolutely anything. Uh, fabric, uh, paper, painting, uh, whatever you want. And one is lovely. Uh, make a nice uh, birthday card. Uh, Two is lovely and a hundred is fantastic. Pop over to the shop and see if I've managed to do anything about listing them in the shop. Oh, what do you think, Norma? You like this horse? What should we call it? I've tempted to call it Brexit, but that's not a very good name for a horse, is it? 